Hi and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm making the fourth and final video of the four part video series on how to moot for undergraduate, first year undergraduate law students. So this is just a brief outline of what I covered in all of the other three videos and um, yeah let's just get straight into this one. I will be covering um, other preparations that you can be doing for your first moot or your you know subsequent moots. And as always, you know, don't forget to subscribe if you're interested in law related stuff or student life or anything like that. I don't know what kind of videos I'll be making at the moment, but uh, they're usually law related. I have um, a list of things that I'll be covering. But yeah, just um, if you're interested in law related content um, subscribe. And let's get straight into the video. So my first tip for mooting uh, an extra preparation tip would be to make flashcards or little notes on the cases that you will be citing. So for this, um, I used uh, 6 inch by 4 inch um, flashcards. You can find them at a few places. Usually the smaller flashcards don't do it for me. So I get the um, flashcards are a bit bigger and uh, I found them very useful in my uh, first year moots. And on these flashcards, what you can keep is your uh, the full citation, the full name of the case, um, the context in the case, so all the facts and then key quotes and judgments that you will be citing, which will also be in your bundle. And uh, I also covered this in the um, previous video, the third video. And moving on to the second tip would be to know your partner very well. So um, before your first moot, you would want to, um, you want to meet up with your partner. You can talk to them about different things. You can even plan the moot together. Um, and yeah, you can, um, in that way, teamwork really um, does make the dream work. I hate to be corny or anything, but that is, um, that is how it works. And another thing with your partner is you can rehearse together. So it's um, one partner can act as the judge and um, the other partner will do their speaking role. So if it is the senior counsel practicing their speaking role, they can aim for around 13 minutes out of their 15 minutes. So um, if they do get questioned by the actual judges, they will have a bit of leeway to um, make up an answer and um, other time for pauses and other things like that. Also for your first ever moot, uh, usually giving the um, senior counsel role to the more confident person is the way to go. It's not really, um, it's not really a major thing who, um, who has what role, but it's just um, who will be more confident to speak for longer periods. You can switch um, senior and junior counsel uh, between if different moots, but um, for the first moot, whoever's more confident would usually get the uh, senior counsel role. And my third tip would be to, um, well, it's not really a tip, it's more language that you should be using. I should have covered this in the second video, but um, it's just something that sprung to mind when planning this video. So um, when you start your um, your submission, you will want to say, um, may it please your lordships, my name is, say your name, and then you will say, I am the senior or junior counsel for the appellant or respondent. And just in case you missed that, I'll write it all here in a little bubble I like putting text in various places but um, yeah that's that's what you should say at the at the very beginning of your um, uh, ground that you'll be covering and just remember this is kind of like the fourth tip um, throughout your submissions the judges will be picking apart your arguments so um, and during this I didn't really know this for my first move but you can confer with your with your partner so you can just tell the judges you'd like to speak to your partner about whatever question they asked and then that way you can get two opinions as opposed to just your own on answering the judges questions. And for this, if you are actually doing your moot online, I doubt it will be in the future, but just in case you are and you like to talk to your partner, you can just tell the judges and then, you know, ring your partner on your phone because you'll have your laptop here and then you can just ring your partner on your phone. Um, think of the best possible answer and then tell the judges you're ready to answer and then continue with the moot. Another tip for the rebuttal period, so this only applies to the senior counsel for the appellant. You want to get the most out of that short two minute period. They'll cut you off instantly as soon as the two minutes is over. So make your time count really. What you want to be covering is things such as your strongest arguments, so reiterate them and then also dismiss their arguments as much as possible. Uh, make sure that you do this in a professional manner and don't refer to them as he and she. You want to say my learned friends opposite, for example. There's more information about the lingo in the second video, so there'll be a link in the uh, description to that, just in case you missed it. Another thing to mention within your um, rebuttal period, so this is for the senior counsel of the appellant only, um, you will want to mention the um, persuasive arguments. So those were covered in the previous video. I'll leave a link in the description for that as well. And um, persuasive arguments as well as weak points that, the, um, that your learned friends opposite made. 
And throughout the um, the moot, you want to keep eye contact if you're in person with the judges. This will ensure that they are following your argument and also it'll keep um, a level of confidence, it'll display a level of confidence from you, in other words. Another thing about eye contact is that you can read what they're about to do. So for example, if you make a point and then they will pull a face or something like that, you can you, you just ensure that you know what they're about to do. So you can mentally prepare for um, a question or anything like that. Another tip is to listen to the judges. This is really important. I know it sounds simple, but during one of my first year moots, I was um, uh, obviously giving my submissions. And in the first submission that I made, I cited it fully. And then the judge said to me, uh, you don't have to give the full citation moving forward and I didn't really hear them. I should have probably asked to uh, for them to repeat that but I didn't hear them and then continued with my other submissions and I fully cited the cases. So while this isn't a major thing it didn't lose me any points I don't think uh, because I was still giving the full citation I just didn't hear them. Just have the confidence to speak to the judges and um, request to, for them to say anything again if you didn't hear it. So what to take away from this video is the main tips, obviously have flashcards, remain um, professional throughout the whole thing, so know how to refer to people, all of the, um, the ways of referring to people are in the second video, and yeah, just have fun with your moots, I haven't really mentioned that before, but it is a good experience to have in your first year, and it really builds your confidence, especially if you're assigned a random partner, you can get to know them as well, and um, yeah, it's really good. So overall, mooting in the first year is a really good skill to have, really good activity to participate in. And uh, the way to do this is uh, obviously joining your bar, bar council in the uni and they'll usually hold an internal mooting competition for first years only. But yeah, that's all I'll be covering in this uh, in the fourth and final video uh, of this four part series on how to moot for first year undergraduate law students. If you have any questions, you know, leave a comment. I know um, I went over these points quite quickly, but you can always watch the video back again uh, and go to whichever video you want. But if you have any additional questions, you know, leave a comment or even DM me on Instagram. I would be um, I'd be happy to uh, clarify any any points I've made. But yeah, thank you so much for watching, hopefully all four of the videos. If you haven't, make sure you check them out. It may answer some additional questions that you might have. And yeah, I'll see you in the uh, next video. Goodbye.